What's up, Battletech fans? We're back in the pit one more time with Rhonda Snord's Jumping Highlander, because you voted for it. For this miniature, I'm going to focus on ease of production instead of fine detailing. I wanted to present this and the jump plume with as few steps as possible to achieve a great look, and I wanted to put another tutorial out there that you can do even if you have shaky hands or somewhat poor eyesight. As usual, all the materials you'll need are listed in the video description. Okay, let's get started. I had to paint this by using some putty and sticking the miniature on the ruined urban mech base that it comes with in order to keep it from falling off as I worked. I'll transfer to the jump plumes later. If you've watched the channel for any length of time, you'll know one of my go-to's for priming a miniature is Wraithbone Spray. Since I'm going to be working with contrast paint again, I'm going to stick with this for now. Just make sure you get even coverage and spray the undersides of the miniature as well. I really feel like Rhonda's Highlander should be done as a rich, almost wine-colored shade of pink, and the contrast color Volupus Pink is perfect for that, in my opinion. Hit the miniature with this at full strength, and go for even coverage. You're looking to make sure you get all the nooks and crannies of the miniature, but also trying to reduce the amount of pooling and streaks in the paint. Some pooling is okay, and it's one of those things that you'll just have to experiment with until you find a balance that looks right to you. If you feel like you have too much in any one spot, use your brush to wick it away or spread it around more evenly, whichever you prefer. It's all about whatever makes you happy at this point, because at the end of the day, you just want to have a good time painting. Now I want to smooth all this out with some Karober Crimson. I don't get much of a chance to use this color, so I'm grateful to have been able to use it these last couple times. Apply a coating of this to the miniature in full strength, using the same concepts as lined out for the contrast paint previously. Do an even coat, trying to reduce pooling. Remember, you'll want to wait at least 25 to 30 minutes for the contrast paint to dry before you apply the shade. If you try to go too fast, the shade will reactivate the contrast paint that hasn't dried yet, and it'll rub right off. This'll leave you with a big oval-shaped white spot right on a highly visible area of the miniature, and you'll be really frustrated. Ask me in the comments how I know. Once your shade is dry, it's time for a light dry brushing, and I like to use Pink Horror. Who comes up with these names? Anyway, get out your favorite large dry brush and add a small amount of paint to the bristles. Brush most of it off on a paper towel or napkin, and test it on your fingernail to make sure only a light dusting comes off with each pass of the brush. When you feel like it's right, dry brush the entire miniature. This is my favorite dry brush, Trusty Rusty, but you can use any other kind of large dry brush from either Citadel or Army Painter and be able to achieve the same look. Just go quickly, as you're not looking to get paint on more than just the angular, raised areas of the miniature. This will make the panels and other extraneous details have a more sunk-in look by giving them the illusion of depth. You can do this to your heart's content, really. Whatever amount of highlights you want, dry brush until you're satisfied. Just remember, you can add more, but you can't take it away without significant effort. So take your time and add a little more at a time if you're not sure. Now we're almost done. Pick out the spots of the miniature you'd like to be metallic before you start, because as I always say, going in with a plan is helpful. I really wanted the pink to be the focus of this miniature, so I didn't pick out too many metallic areas so as not to be a distraction. That doesn't mean you have to do that, though. I went with the fist, the edge of the gauss rifle barrel, laser ports, the missile bay, and the jump jets. I figure I'll do the shocks at the bottom of the shins, too. Why not?
Once that's dry, give the metallics a coating of null oil at full strength. Remember, a little goes a long way, and I was able to shade several of the metallic areas with just the initial amount of shade I picked up on the bristles the first go. Go back for more if you feel like you need to, but you most likely won't need much for the areas outside of that left fist. Again, whatever makes you the happiest. And we're finished with part one. I gave the cockpit my usual sunset effect with flash gets yellow and e end in yellow contrast. I didn't do any dry brushing on the metallics this time because I'm going for as few steps as I can to get it ready to play. Now that we've finished that, let's move on to the jump plumes. I went with my other standby, Duplicolor Sandable White Auto Primer for this one. You can get it at any O'Reilly Auto Parts for about 7 bucks a can. It's one of the best primers I've ever used. Anyway, start out with a full strength coating of Basilicanum Gray to the smoky areas. Leave the very tops where the fire should be white for now, we'll come back to those later. There's almost no such thing as too much on this part of the smoke, so don't be afraid to add a little extra if you feel like you didn't get enough coverage elsewhere. You want this contrast to sink into all the recesses between the clouds of the smoke to produce a really neat effect when the plumes are finished. Make sure you coat the entire smoke area before you move on, and you'll want to give this probably about 45 minutes to dry just because you'll be applying it so thick and dense. Don't move on too soon, or you'll risk reactivating the paint and rubbing off areas while applying something else. Don't be in that situation. Give it time. Once the contrast paint has thoroughly dried, apply a coating of Null Oil to the same areas at full strength. Again, if you add a little extra here, it's no problem. You want this smoke to look thick and dark, so give it a go and just have fun with it. Once you've gotten to a point you're content with, give it about another 30 minutes or so to dry. Shade is not as viscous as contrast paint, so it won't take as much time to dry, but just make sure it's completely dry before moving on to the next step. I just love this color for doing anything black. Add a small amount of paint to the end of your favorite mid to large size dry brush and wipe off most of it on a napkin or paper towel. Then use quick and even strokes, making sure to hit the entire smoke area. If a little extra here or there gets on the plume, it's not the end of the world. Just keep moving and don't worry about small stuff like that for these. Smoke is chaotic, random, and not all the same color, so there's no need to obsess over. Move on whenever you feel like you're ready. Here's a quick and simple method for painting some of the streams on these plumes to look like fire coming out of the exhaust port. Leave a little bit of water in the bristles of your brush and apply a quick coating of Uriel yellow. The warmer yellow gives the illusion of the heat of the fire. Just coat the streams of fire and if you get a little on the tops where it inserts into the mini, it's okay. No one will ever know and it'll just be our little secret. Give this about 10 minutes or so to dry before you move on. Apply e and yellow contrast at full strength to the yellow areas. If a tad gets on the smoke, don't worry about it. The light from fire also reflects on smoke, so there's no need to obsess about it. Give this a good coating and wait about 25 minutes for it to dry before inserting it back into the miniature for gluing. And we put them together for the finish. I glued everything in place just to be on the safe side and did a quick basing with Armageddon dust and Seraphim sepia. I put some on the undersides of the feet as well because I figured it would make sense and it would leave me not having to paint them since those areas were covered during my initial go at it. As usual, I painted the hex sides a pair of colors so it would be easy to know which hex facing was the front. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and if you give it a shot, please let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Battletech content made for fans just like you. Our Patreon info will be coming up on the screen here very shortly to your right if it hasn't already, so please consider signing up today to enjoy those benefits tomorrow. Thanks again for watching, I'm Tuck Davian, and we'll see you next time right here out on the Space Lane.
Be sure to smash our like button and subscribe to our channel. Crowdfunding is when lots of people give you small amounts of money to help your passion project come to life.